Matt, today's days. What days are today? It's basically all about the food today. All right. Today is National Pepperoni Pizza Day. Ooh, that's a good one. Queso Day. Oh, damn. Fried Rice Day. Mmm. And String Cheese Day. Wow. Mm-hmm. All those sound good to me. I love it. Yeah. Carbs, cheese, pepperoni, bring it on. Yeah, with stuffed crust pizza, isn't that just string cheese in the crust, more or less? I think so. You know what they do? Put it in there. I think so. That's how you can make homemade stuffed crust, is throw cheese sticks in there. Mm. There you go. Good old pepperoni pizza, a classic. Mm-hmm. Are you still doing the deal where you pick off the toppings on your pizza? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You eat the toppings and the cheese and discard the crust. Yes. And it's been going okay? You don't have uh Oh, wait. I would always want to eat the crust. Okay. Always. Moments yeah. of jealousy looking at the kids. Totally. Noshing totally. on the za. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. And what do you... Do you, you dip your pepperoni pizza? Do you dip your toppings in the ranch? I like to put my toppings in my salad. That works, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've got ranch, so... It's good times. It's pizza salad. Does the ranch negate your cal- caloric savings, though? No. Okay. No. I'm pretty. I'm. I'm pretty conservative with my when with my salads. But if you're dunking your crust in, then it's a little bit harder to. <laughs> yeah. Control it. Yeah, lettuce that's saturated in ranch. Eh. Yeah. No thanks. Yep. I'm usually a fork dipper. I get oh my yeah, fork in the ranch. That's yeah. a good tip for the unfamiliar. Yeah, yeah, instead of putting the dressing directly onto the salad, you dip your fork in some ranch mm-hmm. and go for it. Yep. All right. So enjoy the day eating pepperoni pizzas and string cheese and fried rice, fried rice and queso and queso. You might be able to mix mm. all those things together. Maybe. There you go. Yeah. You get a Halloween costume for your dog yet, Kate? No, but we have discussed it. You going with Cal? I don't know. Okay. Elliot wants to be Bo Peep and have Winnie be her sheep, but... <laughs> okay. I don't know how that's going to work. What do you mean? How Like, just the dog going door to door with her? Is that what that means? Kind of. Okay. Kind of, yeah. Elliot was Bo Peep already, and so the costume does not fit... And I'm not really, I haven't, uh, I haven't Pinterested to figure out how to remake that costume. So your brain doesn't go back to how long ago was that? And she was, no, it was just a couple of years ago, but it was a purchased costume versus like trying to create one. I see. And I haven't figured out how to, I haven't gone there yet. I'm kind of trying to talk her out of Bo Peep because I'm like, you've been Bo Peep. Come on. She could be a farmer and the dog could be a cow. Right. Old McDonald. Had a farm? E-I-E-I-O. She could be the farmer. Okay. Old McDonald. Okay, so are there popular pet costumes I should be looking at? Well, I brought it up because the first one mentioned in this story, best Halloween costumes for pets, pointed to a cow two-piece for the pet. There's also, like, you could go for jack-o'-lantern. They point out, okay, for picky pets, you know, for your pets that can't stand to have a bunch of things clipped to them. Okay, okay. I think the best tip here is Halloween shirt. Pull a Halloween shirt over the dog. Oh, there you go. Candy dog pajamas. They point to candy dog pajamas. Bat wings that are part of a harness. Oh, that'd be cute. So your dog won't try to shake it off. Bat dog. Bat dog. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't talked about what we're going to, you know, dress her up as, but it's been talked about. <laughs> been and discussed. every time we're at a store when there's costumes for dogs oh she should be i'm like i'm not spending 40 dollars on a dog costume sorry kids let's make something i don't know if they're all fully armed and operational i think if not then any day now the saint joe dedicated halloween stores will be up and running yeah yeah and you can go peruse where are you just running into them at pet stores pet stores okay yeah Target's got some good. That's where we've seen them. I've had to go to two different pet stores, so we've seen a wide variety. 
I assume you had to go to two different pet stores, not for costume purposes, or are you actually no. actively? Oh, okay. Yeah, we had to. I went to a pet store to get food, and they didn't have it, so I had to go. I think I went to Petco, and they didn't have it, so I had to go to PetSmart. I don't know. Or okay. vice versa. <laughs> right. Either way, they look the same to Yeah, me. it's like an Office Depot, Office Max kind of situation. Right, right. Which I think maybe Max doesn't exist anymore. I forget. Doesn't matter. Now, you dressed Rockney, your old dog, up as a reindeer. 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 Yeah. That was at Christmas time, but not right. really at Halloween. Yeah. Hated it. You imagine you'll <laughs> resume that tradition? Maybe. I got to find the reindeer. I don't, um, I bet you it's like packed away. But she's such a maniac. She's probably going to have that thing off of her head. Rockney was at least like a good old man where he was just like, okay, take your picture and then right. take it off. Like looked at me very sad. Resigned to his fate. Yep. Yes. When he's just, but there's like a, a shortage of groomers right now. So the place where we get her groomed is not taking appointments and we're on a waiting list. Oh. So it's kind of hard to see her face. So I've been putting ponytails in so that she can see. And she puts up with that. <laughs> ponytails above her eyes? Yeah. More or yep. less? <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, that's funny. You come up with that idea on your own? I did. I was like, poor baby can't see. What about just getting scissors out and trimming it? I'm not comfortable with that. Really? Yes. Uh. With as much as crazy as she is and how much she oh. moves around and... I'm like, I'm going to be responsible for our one-eyed dog, so I'm not going to do that. At least then you wouldn't need a Halloween costume, potentially. Right? She could be a pirate. Arr. Arr. I just sent you the ponytail picture. Kate's got her dog's eyebrows in, a ponyta- in ponytails. It's more like bangs. Pulled her. Yeah, you're right. Like eyebrows and bangs in one. And it's a neon green hair tie, so she's very 80s. She's hip. <laughs> yeah, she's very stylish. She looks yeah. pumped in this photo. This is a live photo you sent me. Yep. Where you, I get to see a couple seconds of the dog kind of. <laughs> yep. Uh, she's riding shotgun. Yeah, she looks great. If I saw her out and about and didn't know the story, I wouldn't think that you were just neglecting grooming. I, right. Like maybe this is just the look, you know. That's that's what we were going for, right? Styling, yeah. Matt, I went to a Bravo brunch over the weekend. A Bravo brunch. Is this where you watch Real Housewives or something? I forget what's on Bravo. Well, basically all those Bravo shows. I did not know any of it, but there was like a scavenger hunt and there was a a quiz <laughs> and they had some great prizes and they had what are they called? Easter eggs around the house that were like from Bravo episodes. And if you got them all, then you got a prize or something. Basically, I just was there for the brunch. Yeah. But this brunch started at 1030 and it lasted until 430. Damn. Were you pretty lit by the end of it? I actually was not. There were some that were, but I actually kind of took my time. Yes. And I switched back and forth between mimosas and high noons. What's a high noon? High noon is like a, it's not a seltzer. I think, I want to say it's like vodka and juice carbonated. Okay. Yeah. Good times. But they're in the skinny cans and delicious and. Slightly less alcoholic than mimosas. Is that what the point is? No, I don't know that slightly less. Just, you know, by the pool, have a high noon. There you go. Well, the way you were talking i thought maybe high noon was a non-alcoholic beverage no i wasn't too lit i was switching between mimosas and apparently some other alcoholic beverage yeah i didn't Hmm. say yeah they're vodka hard seltzers my bad i'm like i know there's carbonation of some sort i had some grapefruit ones delicious i mean i wasn't mixing the high noons and the champagne that though that would be a good idea i still don't get why that was a response to did you end up lit by the end of the day okay maybe i drank them slower because i was oh. switching them up i wasn't just okay. chugging high noons all day i was had a few mimosas in between yeah man that mess up your stomach pretty bad if you drank mimosas for six straight hours probably right yeah right and your head liver but there was a hostess gift that someone brought that 
was perfect. And I took a picture of it because I'm like, how do I give this out as party gifts or have it like in my bathroom? It was a candle that says, please don't do Coke in the bathroom. And it says, smells like unruly guests and snowflakes. <laughs> okay. It's kind of an intense candle. I thought that was perfect for the Housewives Bravo brunch. Oh. And so did the person who brought it. But isn't that great? Please don't do Coke in the bathroom. It's a bathroom candle. <laughs> I don't know if I get it. People do Coke in the bathroom? Cocaine? Yeah. Yeah, and what's the candle connection? It's just in the bathroom so that when people go into your bathroom, they say, please don't do Coke in oh, here. okay. Funny haha. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I thought there was some connection I was missing. I know. You're not a big fan of signs or humor in the bathroom. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Too far. Matt doesn't like funny things in the bathroom, you guys. He's serious business when he's doing his business. Serious business in there. <laughs> I was just uh, talking about it, just the public restroom at the workplace is all I was saying. Okay. But I give up on that argument. I feel like I lost. Because there are more signs for bathrooms these days. Yeah, you just don't typically see them in public restrooms. Yeah. Okay. You see Tom Brady threw a fit and threw his Microsoft Surface, broke it again. Yeah. And hasn't he been warned about that? Like, don't throw the tablets, dum-dum. Yes, he should be fined. He will be fined for this, which he can probably afford. Do you think he thinks about that when he throws it? He's like, it's just a tablet. I can cover that. Take it out of my check. It looked like he went out of his way to pick up the tablet and then immediately throw it. It wasn't like he looked at it first to see something that disgusted him on the screen. He was like, oh, there's one of those. I enjoyed breaking those one time when I was pissed. So this will do it. Here we go. <laughs> Wham. And afterward, he said, yeah, that's probably going to be another meme. I have learned the hard way that if you are going to throw a tantrum and slam something, you should slam something that you can A, afford or right. B, fix by yourself. Yeah. Have you ever destroyed some? I have broken a dryer door. A oh. dryer door got slammed and the little clasp that clicks it snapped oh, yeah. when it broke. And this will be a true test if Monty listens, Matt, because I told him that it was an accident. And 100% it was, n it was an accident that it broke. Huh. It was 100% for sure slammed. Were you yeah. angered with the dryer because the clothes weren't dry? Uh, I think I was angry about drying something that I shouldn't have. Oh, and so I see. I was see. pulling things out and I was like, son of a bleep, 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 mm -hmm. slam. Yeah. And Monty was like, how'd that happen? I was like, well, I just kind of didn't, I didn't mean to, but I, you know, I shut the dryer a little bit harder than I should have because immediately I'm not angry about the item anymore. Now I'm like, gosh, how much yep. is that going to cost to fix? And how are we going to get the piece? And you yeah. guys get it fixed, I assume. Yeah, yeah. Monty got it fixed. Monty found the piece and fixed it. And yeah, the delay of doing laundry though, because I was mad that I dried, and it was probably stupid. It was probably like a pair of jeans. But oh, I don't recall ever destroying something in anger. Look at you, Mister Temper Controlled. <laughs> I mean, that, that's right. <laughs> The closest I've come is to actually just getting angry with my phone for, you know, not responding or, or something. Being like, Ugh! And then I just kind of imagine in my head being the person that would just throw the phone as hard as they could into the wall. Right. And then that's enough for me. And then you're like, oh, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to take a few deep breaths. And yeah. Matt, did you hear about the nursing home that hired strippers? I did not. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a senior citizens center, which is harder to say than you think it is, in Taiwan. They were trying to celebrate the rice and wheat harvest of this season, which is a thing. Okay. Okay. Sounds like a thing a country might do. And the intention was to entertain residents and make them happy. But they hired uh, an exotic dancer to perform for them. She wore a coronavirus mask and lingerie as she twerked, gyrated, and moved on the floor for the retired veterans. Did she give lap dances? 
I, that part I, is not in the okay. in the story, other than like the <laughs> families of the senior citizens were irate. <laughs> Why? I don't know that there's any complaints from the senior citizens. I was gonna say, yeah, let them let them get their lap dances. Come on, I, I guess the sad thing is, you know, you're like, oh, my thing don't work or whatever. Oh, jeez. You know, all this does is remind me of the years and years and years it's been since my plumbing worked, right? Oh, I didn't go there. Womp womp. No, <laughs> womp womp. That's what I'm here for. I'm there now. You always think that I'm in the gutter, but... <laughs> Boom. Welcome to the gutter, Matt. Thanks for joining me. You're welcome. Okay, people are buying flags that are too big for their poles. Have you noticed this? Uh, no. Typically, there are these <laughs> businesses that are like, we want a big old flag. Right. And there is some around. I'm not going to call anyone out in particular, but you'll see, like, just go down I-29 from time to time. You'll see an American flag and be like, that thing is mad to the point. There was one I saw near Platte City over the weekend where if it were to be said at half mast, it would be almost like touching the ground because it was so big. Okay. Okay. So I get it. Biggest flag possible, USA and all that. But you got to get a matching pole. Get a pole to get it up high enough. I wanted to mention this as a public service announcement. When you said pole, I was not thinking tall enough as much as I was thinking like, oh, it's too skinny to support the weight of the flag blowing in the wind. Oh, it's not girthy enough. I did not say <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, it's got to get up there, you know. It's, uh, you got you to hoist that thing way up into the sky. If it's going to be so big, it needs to catch some air. These things are just kind of, the, fl- the flag's just kind of, yeah, the flag's just kind of flaccid right there. Just, mm. Oh, gosh. Is, there, is that enough? <laughs> is that enough innuendo? That's good. That's good. Okay. Uh, are we talking? <laughs> so invest in taller flagpoles. Dear business owner, and yes, USA, I agree with that part, but get it up there. Get it up there. Come on. What are you doing? How can it be a landmark if it's not tall enough, right? Right. 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 Can't say under the giant flag. Yeah, it doesn't look nearly. It's got to be hoist that thing way up there. Let it be seen from miles away. And nearly touching the ground. Come on. Get out of here. Come on. That's just disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that like anti-flag etiquette? Letting it touch the ground? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it touches the ground and you're supposed to go through the ceremony where you retire the flag. Maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's been a while since I took that course in Cub Scouts or whatever it was. Matt, America's Got Talent just wrapped up. So I thought we'd play a game called Name That Celebrity's Talent. Name That Celebrity's Talent. Did it do, 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 do. Okay. All right. Let's start with Justin Bieber. Music. Go ahead. Guess his talent. <laughs> music. <laughs> Just dancing. Singing and playing this, music and yes, dancing. We would have accepted dancing and singing. No. Okay. So does Justin Bieber <laughs> excel at crocheting, um, hacky sack, or solving Rubik's Cubes? Hacky sack. You think Bieber's got a sack pack? Oh, dear. That follow him around where he like oh, plays sack hacky pack. sack and they're like, Bieber, Bieber. I sure hope so. If not, uh, that's the lie I'm going to help spread. Okay. Well, he actually solves Rubik's Cubes. Huh. So maybe he's got a cube group that follow him around. They're like, solve it, solve it. And what can't Justin Bieber do? I know, right? Very talented fellow. All right, Taylor Swift. I feel like this one is an easy one. Is Taylor Swift's talent axe throwing, coding, or making jams and jellies? Jams and jellies. Jams and jellies, for sure. Taylor Swift is uh, pretty well-rounded in the kitchen, I believe. That sounds familiar, yeah. Yeah. I know she did a lot of baking there for a while and would gift cookies and stuff. Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Does she make sculptures out of coins? Sand art or speaking several languages? I will. Hmm. She makes sculptures out of coins. 
You know, that is so specific that you would think that that's what it is. That's why I chose it, yeah. I know, and I don't know who gave that as an answer, but no, she speaks several languages. What do you mean you don't know you don't know who made the game that you're sharing? Is that what you're indicating? I don't know the individual that came up with the, hey, I bet you making sculptures out of coins is a thing. <laughs> yeah, so what is it? She's multilingual? She's multilingual. She was born in Germany, and she is fluent in several languages. If there was something less ridiculous than she likes making coin sculptures on there, I probably would have guessed that one. Right? <laughs> that's, how, that's how they get you. I do think sand art is kind of out there, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, and the final one, Kaylee Cuoco. Is her talent painting, fencing, or horseback riding? Painting, fencing, or horseback riding? Mm-hmm. I will say fencing. I would probably would have guessed that as well, but she's an equestrian. Okay. Yeah, she's good at horseback riding. Yay for knowing Taylor Swift's talent, though. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Do you know what navel gazing means, Kate? All right. Navel gazing? Navel gazing. Yeah. Like one's belly button. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say watching ships go by, but <laughs> since you said belly button, uh, is it smelling belly buttons? Gross. Terrible, right? Navel gazing. You never heard this expression before? No. Like stop being so navel gazy. Like self-absorbed, no. basically. How does that mean that? Well, I looked it up because I've been hearing this okay. phrase a lot recently. And I was like, well, I know that means like kind of being full of yourself. But it originated from the ancient Greeks who would stare at their navels, their own navels, as a way of meditation. That would hurt my neck. Yeah? Yeah. At least you work on that belly, get that belly to... Stick out some more and be easier to look at your belly button. There you go. Don't have to look down as far. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting deal. Now, when I searched for navel gazing and went to the Wikipedia for it. I have never, ever heard of this. Really? Oh, okay. Yes. And I still don't understand <laughs> how meditating at your belly button turns into being arrogant. <laughs> yeah, or being full of yourself. Self-indulgent or excessive contemplation of oneself or a single issue. That sounds narcissistic. At the expense of a wider view. Okay. <laughs> they had- yeah. And then when I went to the Wikipedia for it, they've got this photo. Four statues depicting what's also known as omphaloskepsis. Navel gazing. And these statues look like they could just be looking at their own junk, actually. You know? Right. So, I don't know. But navel gazing, if you, dear listener, were curious where that came from, the ancient Greeks who would meditate by staring at their belly button for a long time. And if you weren't familiar with it all. Good old Greeks. Now you know. Now you know. Go forth and call people out for navel gazing. Matt Kellogg's has introduced Insta Bowls, where you just add water. Okay. So, hmm. I mm-hmm. guess historically I'm familiar with the little miniature. Cereal boxes you might get at the hotel. Right. So similar idea, except you don't even need to provide a bowl. You just need water because there's powdered milk at the bottom. Mm. Oh, just add water to it. Just add water. They're Fruit Loops, Frosted Flakes, Apple Jacks, and Raisin Bran are the ones that they're trying out. Uh, You can buy them at Walmart. Each bowl is $2, which is way more than a normal bowl at home costs, but... They're trying to think that you're going to pay extra for the convenient on-the-go aspect. Right. Throw it in the car. And if you've got bottled water around, you can Mm -hmm. make some cereal and maybe make an ill-advised decision to eat cereal in the car. But if you're broken down. If you're broken down or, you know, going to be somewhere for a long period of time. Don't you think it probably tastes okay? You kind of indicated with your tone of voice that you didn't think that sounded especially hot since it's using... I don't know about powdered milk. I don't know. The reason I say don't you think it'll be okay is just because it doesn't seem like those brands would want to serve something disgusting. True. You know, and there's enough sugar in all those food items to counteract... True. ...potential bad taste in there. And I mean, Fruit Loops, 
I would eat those. Pl- all of these, I would eat plain. I don't need the milk. So, well, where are you going to get your calcium? You know? True. Out of powder at the bottom of the bowl. How about the children. <laughs> the children need it, you know. Yeah, I don't know. You think you're going to buy a buy some of these? I don't think so, especially okay. with two dollars a bowl. I've got other emergency foods in the car that you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you care to share with the listener what your emergency car food items are? Yeah, we've got pretzels, goldfish. Okay. We have mixed nuts. Good choice there. You got some protein. We have veggie straws and popcorn and maybe even some, we might have granola bars in there. Mm -hmm. Usually the granola bars we get have chocolate in them, so there might not be. Right. Yeah. Summertime. Kind of gross granola bars. Yeah. Especially since summertime. Looks like there might actually be an in, in, in sight this week. But, huh, interesting. Popcorn, I assume, is already popped, or are you using your engine yes. to pop it or something? Okay. No, we already have the skinny pop or whatever it's called, the individual bags of popcorn. Yeah, it sounds like you got a lot of food in there. We do. Yep. We live in our car, though. I think we've, after school, we need snacks and... yeah. Before practice or after practice. And yeah, the cooler snacks I bring the day of. Obviously, I don't leave like protein balls in the snack pack all day. Those go in a little refrigerated or cooled container. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But no, no prepackaged cereals that have powdered milk in there that turns into milk when you add water. No, probably not. Okay. But if you'd like to add those to your emergency snacks in your car, $2 at Walmart. <laughs> 